Recently, the uh, Clarion Project received documents showing the president, President Bush, was scheduled to meet with Islamists linked to the Muslim Brotherhood on 9-11, demonstrating that the Brotherhood was indeed successful in gaining access to the Oval Office and high-ranking members of our government before the World Trade Center came down. Here to discuss and how it relates to what we recently told you about Nover, Grover Norquist is Ryan Morrow. He is the national security expert with the Clarion Project. Ryan, let's talk about, uh, first of all, these documents. I'm here with these documents. The revised private schedule of the President and Mrs. Bush, this is from Tuesday, September 11th, and this is amazing. It shows they are supposed to be at that elementary school, then fly back. At 2 o'clock, they have a pre-brief for the Muslim leader uh, meeting, and then at 3.05 and 3.20, with Carl Rove in the Oval Office, they meet with the leaders. Can you tell me who these guys are? Yeah, definitely. Uh, over at the Clarion Project, where we have the full expose, we go through each of the 16 attendees that were scheduled to meet with President Bush. He was first supposed to meet with six Muslim and Arab supporters, as they described them, people who donated to the campaign, people who helped him win the campaign. And of those first six, every single one has some connection to the Muslim Brotherhood Network and specifically the groups uh, that are connected to al Moody, Sami Al-Aryan, um, the folks that you've been talking about a lot over the past week. Then there was supposed to be a second meeting with a total of 16 people, including the original six. And of those 16, 14 of them uh, also have links to this Brotherhood Political Influence Network, including Omar Ahmed of CARE, um, a leader from ISNA, and the list goes on and on. And uh, Karl Rove was supposed to attend that meeting. There were seven additional White House officials, three of those White House officials involved in this meeting with Islamists uh, came from Norquist's organization. On the attendee side, three of the attendees came from Norquist's organization. So you can see the influence of his group on the Bush administration on that day with just these few documents. Okay, is, is there um, any doubt in your mind that Grover Norquist is either a willing or unwitting um, agent of influence? Definitely not, because when you look at our expose, we first begin the story with really the broader issue here that we need to focus on, which is the fact that the Muslim Brotherhood and Samuel Aryan, um, al Moody, convicted terrorists, set up, according to FBI documents, Muslim Brotherhood documents, this operation to influence politics, to get to the top leaders of both political parties. And from that basis is where you can see why this is so important for us to discuss and look at. Um, now, in your interview with Grover, uh, one of the ways he defended himself was that he was saying that his Muslim partners that he proclaimed were moderate put together this trip to Auschwitz and got Muslim leaders together to condemn anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial. Correct. If you, if you look at that statement that he was using to defend himself and his Muslim partners, five of the eight have radical backgrounds, including links to the Muslim Brotherhood. So after all this is out there, after all this information is out there, he is still promoting these Islamist radicals as moderates, and he did it on your show. Ryan, <clears throat> why is nobody talking out about this? Why is, how, how does Grover Norquist get away with this for so long? I think a lot of it just comes down to hyper-partisanship. And I see this on both sides of the political aisle when we document this. If you're talking about how the Republican Party is getting advice or working with Islamist figures that they shouldn't be, um, then you'll have that side saying, oh, you're a sellout, or I don't really believe it. They demand an unreasonable amount of proof. And then when you do the same thing for President Obama, such as with his Countering Violent Extremism Summit, which we did another expose on, you get the same type of reaction. You say, oh, well, this is all Islamophobia. Um, this is right-wing extremism. And so I think the biggest problem here is that hyper-partisan mindset. Um, how, what's your feeling on Karl Rove and how involved he is? I, I mean, I've made up my mind. Um, everybody has to make up their own mind. But I, I just don't find it plausible that Grover Norquist started something where he said his goal was to get the bad guys out and then he uh, lines himself with every bad guy known to mankind. It just doesn't, it do, it's just not, it doesn't hold any water. However, 
Carl Rove has not started anything for bad guys. Carl Rove uh, is uh, a guy who just cares about getting elected and making money. What are the odds Carl Rove doesn't know who these people are? I think it's very possible he doesn't know. Uh, I do remember that there was an interview that uh, he gave in regards to how the Bush administration was upholding some of these radicals as moderates after 9-11, and he indicated that he didn't know. Um, and that's what makes this so difficult. It's difficult to know who knows the backgrounds of these individuals and who doesn't. But for me, the bottom line is that when you look at these documents, what you see is Karl Rove was supposed to attend this meeting with President Bush with very radical people that was documented at the time. And we've got to figure out for the sake of our national security, how does that happen? How is it that you can have figures with documented radical backgrounds, links to the Muslim Brotherhood, get political access like that all the way at the top to specifically advance their pet issues, which is also discussed in the documents, the different things that they wanted to talk about, um, different counterterrorism measures, Middle East policy. Uh, and that, that's just frightening that they can get to that level. I have some of the people that, that were part of this, and these are Grover Norquist people. One of them is Saeed Seed, former ISNA Secretary General. Can you tell me a little bit about him and what he said in 2006? Right. Uh, he was actually recorded saying, our job is to change the Constitution of America. And ISNA, for those that don't know, they hold these very radical conferences where the speakers are Islamists and federal prosecutors uh, not only label them an unindicted co-conspirator, which a lot of people know, but they also specifically said this is a U.S. Muslim Brotherhood entity. Uh, how about uh, the Imam Webb? Tell me about him. Uh, he is a former leader of the Islamic Society of Boston. Um, he's made various extremist statements, and that mosque was founded by al Moody. And by the way, the two individuals that you just mentioned uh, were signatories to that letter that Grover was um, referring to on your program, saying, look, this is proof that I work with moderate Muslims. Uh, and uh, Yasser, uh, is it Qadi? Yes. And th this is a good one, because re remember in your interview and in the beginning, he said that his goal was to promote a moderate version of Islam, one that was uh, compatible with free market and uh, capitalist values. Um, well, this individual who signed that statement actually said that Islam demolishes American capitalism. So to your earlier point, uh, he says that he wanted to promote a moderate pro-capitalist version of uh, Islam, yet the people who funded his organization in the beginning and that he continues to promote to this day stand for the exact opposite. Tell me about the Clarion Institute. How long have you guys been on this? Uh, we've been on it for several years. You can find a lot of information about uh, Grover Norquist and Islamist engagement with both political parties at clarionproject.org. Uh, we're also the organization that put out some powerful documentaries, Obsession, The Third Jihad, Iranium. Um, and so this is something that we document every single day. So, Ryan, you guys have been in the trenches for a long time. We brought a lot of attention to Grover Norquist. But I haven't seen anybody. I'm waiting to hear from the uh, NRA. They're finishing up their um, their investigation. We'll see. Now, why do you you had a, did I am I reading something in your face there on that one? It's just amusing to me that there continues to be these ongoing investigations um, over the same thing over and over again. Um, and then Grover Norris says, "Oh well, it's all old information that's been settled." Uh, well, obviously not. When you have people. Uh, that are still learning about it and see it and say, my goodness, this is something that we have to look into. Well, I will tell you that I, I mean, I have a really hard time believing that they're going to come up with something that would be um, reasonable. Uh, I mean, I can't, I mean, we've done our investigation. There's, there's just too much here. This, he's, you saw the interview with, with Grover on this program? Yes, for sure. I, I mean, I, I, how how does that make any logical sense at all to any thinking person? It doesn't all tie together. It just doesn't work. And, and when you look at this list of the, they said this was the top dozen Muslim and Arab organizations that President Bush was to meet with on September 11th of all days. And when you see how interconnected they are, how uh, the leader of one was a board member for al Moody, and you see how this seems like a large network, but it actually comes down to a small circle. 
I, I mean, that's what a political influence operation is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the people that get involved with it don't understand the backgrounds of who they're dealing with. And what's so sad about it is that when you look at polls and just even my personal experience, so few Muslim Americans support this type of stuff. Yet here they are. These are the moderates that come to save the day because of their political access. Thank you so much, Ryan. I appreciate it. And thanks for all of your work at the Clarion Project. And I sure. urge you to go to theclarionproject.org and, and look at all of their uh, work and make a decision for yourself. And it is time that we as Americans stand up for the truth <coughs> because nobody else is. But you need to be very clear. And the best way to do it is to tell organizations, um, <coughs> and the GOP being one of the first stops, uh, I'm not going to be involved with you. As long as you're involved with these people who are running what appears to be an influence um, uh, program for the Muslim Brotherhood, we're clear on who the Muslim Brotherhood is. You may not be, but until you are clear that the Muslim Brotherhood is a very dangerous operation, can't give a dime to you. It's time to put your your focus on the people who will actually move. The Republic's life depends on it. Thanks, Ryan. Back in a minute.